everyone welcome back it's a lovely tuesday today well would be wednesday night by the time um i post this i hope that you guys are all doing really well thank you so much for all the positive messages and support and encouragement that you've given me with this little mini journal you are just amazing but i thought i'd do want to put together a little video just to give you the step-by-step -step instructions and offer you just a few tips on how I did this. It's always good to see that because obviously I haven't labelled things, um, but I thought that this would help better than photographs. All right, so let's get to it. This is the little mini journal that we're talking about, the little spring one. And I've got a full flip through on, on that. If you And I'll put that in the link below so you can go and have a look at that. Um, but I want to just talk you through a couple of things on how I've put this together. So this is it. Right, so moving along. First thing that you do is you want to print out the whole kit. So the kit is 13 pages. Um, and I print this um, on good paper. All right, quality paper. This is not copier paper. First thing I will say is um, get the best quality paper that you can afford. I am going with HP Color Choice. That's what I've used for mine. That's what I print on. It's it, more expensive, but it's worth it because if you're spending the money to have a nice project and you're buying digitals, you want to make sure that you're going to use quality items. Now, I use an HP um, printer with genuine HP cartridges. I belong to the in, um, Instant Ink Plan, so it is quality ink. Um, printers are not the same. So, um, you know, you decide if you are um, printing out your work and you feel um, you're using the draft as to print out, meaning the not the best quality um, to save on ink, you're going to get what you pay for. So make sure that you um, with this, it's a light kit um, printed on, um, you know, good quality ink. You, I, I've done this on um, normal color. But you can do it on color fine as well all right it's very light so it doesn't use much ink but this i've just done and it looks perfect so a good quality paper the, the paper weight is 160 gsm if you're living um in the uk or europe but of course if you're living in the americas or canada or that side of the world you're looking at about 60 to 65 pound weight and as i said i've used the hp color choice all right so it's a beautiful smooth silky finish and you get a good result so that's paramount all right um the other thing is uh, you get 13 pages so i've shown you what the pages are but i just want to talk you through a couple of things so go and print out the kit you get two files they're in the jpeg or in the pdf i've put in the usa and the a4 so you can decide which it is that you're using um, and this is the front cover uh, which you want to cut out all right and then i'm going to show you how i put that together this is your backing page for the cover all right so that is going to stick on the back of that all right so that's the first bit um this is the backing page um and it's in there not to really print out but to print on the back of things so for example and this is where i need to go i'll get to that at the end all right your next page is this page now these pieces here all work together all right, so I have got into the habit of clipping these items. Now, it's not always like that. It's because of space and pages. I try to maximize the amount of pages that uh, um, I fill up things so you print a minimum of pages. All right, so that lot goes together and is your mini folio. You're not going to print anything on the back of that. This page here is your little pocket. I'm going to show you how that works. This is a little... Um, tuck spot so that's fine we don't need to print anything on the back there this is the bit at the back i'm going to show you how that goes i've got tabs here which you can cut out um, either by hand or if you've got one of these whale tail punches you can use that you've got ample space to make sure that you get it cut out there but i put those in for people who don't have a whale tail punch especially those bits go onto this item here these do not so i'd clip that together this page here is a little envelope um, that we're going to decorate. This is a journal page. And this page here, along with the, the ones that follow, you need to print that backing page on the back. Okay, so that's what I've done there. If you're getting a printed kit from me, 
I have done this for you so you don't have to worry all right so this is a page when we cut it out we then have got printing on this side and on that side once we've cut it out and, and the same with the envelope all right so that one does and um, this is an envelope this is a little tuck box for your little folio that I showed you um, over here so this goes with this okay just I, I ran out of space on that page this is a label that's going to go on our front cover i've got a little pop that i've cut out all the fussy cuts and they're in there all right so that's that i have printed on the back of that one as well that background page um this is a, your other envelope i've got these bits here that are part of your little decoration these bits here work together and this i've printed on the back here as well all right now when you oh, i'll get to that in a minute so yeah i've printed on the back there as well this is now the pockets pages i've printed on the back here for these two here okay and i'll talk you through what we do with the scraps in the moment this is mini pages and tag pages the mini envelope sorry mini envelope i've printed on the back of that one as well um now you can back your tags onto card so i'll talk you through that in a moment right on the ephemera pages which is this page here i've printed on the back here and i'm going to cut them out and use them as they are okay this page here um the tags some ephemera your fussy cuts and this is a flap that goes with that mini journal page and i'll show you how they all fit together and um, that's a uh, another bit i have also printed on the back there and then this is your backing page. Okay, so that's everything that you need to do. So go and get all of that ready. And let's cut everything out. Now, before you do that, watch how I'm going to tackle the, um, the actual cover itself. Um, and then you can go and cut everything out. So just pause it after I've covered that. I'll see you back in a sec. Okay, everybody, we're back here now. And as I said, you want to cut out everything, but I want to show you how to put together the cover. Uh, there are many ways to skin a cat. This is just the way I've done it. Now, when I cut this out, you'll see that there are two rounded corners at the end of the pink polka dot paper. Um, I have cut them dead straight across because for me, it is easier for the way we do this. I'm going to stick this down onto this page here and then I'll cut these edges together because it's difficult to match up rounded edges at this point. So go and get your glue stick or glue, whatever glue you've got. Turn this page over the cover and we're going to just put our glue stick all the way over. Now you can use any glue you like. I will end up stitching around this cover, but you do not have to. If you want to, um, if you would prefer not to stitch or you, you, you don't have a sewing machine, I would suggest you use a better glue than a glue stick. It's just my opinion. Okay, so you've got your glue on here. Now what I want to do is I'm going to try and get this. Um, now bearing in mind, this is the background page. This is the upright position. All right. So I want the roses facing up way. I'm going to just turn this over. I have printed mine borderless, so it just depends on you. And because of that, I'm going to be able to stick this right at the top there and I'm going to get it to line up hopefully very hard to do this when you are filming I will say that so I'm going to just turn it to the side so I can see what I'm doing like that like that and then I'm going to just take my bone folder and just smooth out all those edges like that okay now the reason i've done it like this and not stuck it right in the middle is because i want to make use of the scraps you know um, and that's just me being me i try and throw as little paper away as possible all right so i'm going to quickly just cut this out and it's easier to do this when it's um together now um, because now instead of cutting both of these out and trying to stick them together this way you ensure that you have very good um, clean edges all around so there's only the two sides that you're going to have to cut now so it's there 
and straight across like that. And then you can do this with um, with your scissors. You don't have to use a craft knife. Okay, now I've got this whole piece here and I won't use that, so that I'm gonna tear off. This whole piece here is a potential scrap um, opportunity and we can always make something with this. Um, a lovely tag is what I'm thinking, so I'm going to leave that over there for the moment. Okay, just making sure that this other side is looking perfect, and it pretty much is. Um, there's just a little bit here that I am going to take off. Okay, really fine. Okay, so we've got that done now. Now, this is where you want to round off. Now, it's not these two corners. These are straight corners. It's this side here. Okay, so you can either take your scissors and go very slowly like this. All right, or you can take this and do this. All right, one and the same, really. Okay, so you don't need to have a, an edge tool for that. Um, but if you do, that's fine. So there we have it. That's now the upright position for your, your cover. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start over here in the middle and I'm going to just stitch right around there uh, with my sewing machine. But you can also uh, just slightly distress that if you like, just with your ink. Now I have actually chosen, this is just because I have it, so don't go and buy this. If you're really gentle and you have this or this is Memento Toffee Crunch or you've got antique linen, um, use that but if you just go very softly and dub off most of the ink you can use your antique um, sorry your vintage photo all right this is just a lighter shade and because we're dealing with such light colors here I, I've decided to use a lighter one okay but that's personal choice so when I come back I will have inked around the corner and I will have stitched there but of course don't have to if you don't want to you can see now we've got this on the other side and it's perfect it's lined it's given this paper good rigidity now all right it feels nice and firm all right now you can that's all i needed to tell you there go and cut out everything and then we'll get to the next phase okay everybody so i have now slightly distressed this ever so lightly i'm not sure if you can see ever so lightly you can hardly notice and then i've just stitched right around um, that edge there it's just for decorative features I've, it's not a must right on this side now sometimes you get these sort of holes that look like this I'm not a fan so take your bone folder or a knife butter knife and just gently run it over these holes like that it just makes them go all flat and they go away it's like magic magic abracadabra there we go okay so that's all you want to do with that all around and this is the last piece okay so look at that now the holes look far better when you do that okay so it doesn't make the underside look horrible Okay, so there's our cover. It's slightly bowing, but that's not a problem. I'm going to put this underneath my mat here while I'm doing the rest of the stuff. So I just put that underneath a working surface or a pile of books, if that's what you've got, um, and get on with the rest of this. Okay, now with all those bits that you cut out, and I've, I've put them on my piece of paper here, I have cut out everything and all the bits that have this um printed matter on so not the white bits i've kept them so if they look a decent size like these do these keep all right these are things that can go in our scrap pile this is going to make great um little bits to add on to your tags neutral backgrounds are always a, a plus all right so that's what that is this is um i have this because it's one of the pages that you wouldn't print as a separate. This is really a backing page, but um, just wanted to show you that. Okay, so keep those scraps and then the scraps as well like that. 
hang on to those. Okay, I'm just going to put those to the side. Right, so I have now taken a tray and I like to organise everything. So I'm going to talk you through what we've got here. Now, our little folio is the first thing that we're going to do. Um, I've got these like this because I'm going to use my one inch punch to cut those out. Um, you've got that little bit, which is your tuck spot that's going to go on your folio. And the folio is made up of a base and the lining pieces like that. Okay, then that's just the little pocket on the folio. So let's start with that first of all and put that together. Okay, so I'm going to start um, by <laughs> grabbing the wrong thing here. You can cut these out. You don't have to have a punch to do this, um, but I'm going to just use mine because it's easy. Um, but yeah, if you just cut around these circles, it's going to work absolutely fine. Right now, at this point, you want to grab a piece of um, scrap card. So there we have that. Okay, you can use cereal box. You can use whatever you have. This is something that I have. I just want to cut out um, two of these. Um, and if you don't have a circle punch, my suggestion would be take the piece that you um, have just cut out of and possibly use that or stick this onto this and cut around that. So that would work. Okay. So um, you want to put two of these aside for the moment. Um, and the other two we're going to put together on here. So I'm just going to take my art glitter glue. I'm going to put some uh, glue right on the edges here like that. And I want to just take one of these and stick this down like that. Okay. So there we go. And the same with the other one. So just want one more. Now, uh, the reason I've got four of these dots is because I used two like a plaster underneath, but we don't have to do that. Um, we don't have to do that. I'll show you what we're going to do. Right, so we've got two of these here, and this is just a case of uh, just distress the edges ever so quickly. And we'll put these two aside for the moment. We're going to use those on our little folio. Okay. Right. So you've got your little pocket. You've got your two lining pieces. You've got your other lining bit. And you've got your main bit here. And here again, um, I will round off those corners once I've stuck on the, the, the lining bits. So I've cut them straight at this point, And they are rounded. You could keep them straight if you wanted to. Now, these very fine lines that you see here are your folding lines. All right. So I'm going to just take my um, ruler and you can use the back of a butter knife if you don't have a um, bone folder. Just like that. Bone folders are one of the most useful tools ever, honestly. So there we go. I've just run my bone folder over those very thin white lines. And um, I'm just folding those over like that. Okay. Now we're going to start with this middle bit here. And um, you might want to just give it a little bit of a distress. But it's not a must because, as I say, the paper is so pale um you know it's not a big requirement so i want to stick this now and with these bits up there it tells me where i need to go so it just gives me a bit of a guide i want to stick this onto that spot there so i'm going to just take my art glitter glue and get as close to the edges as i possibly can i hope that you're excited to make this um it took me an hour to cut everything out so that wasn't too bad and that was even answering the door um, and I do it all by hand um, and that included all the fussy cuts as well so not too bad at all right so now we want to just get this stuck on and with these little flaps up upright you know that you're not going to go um, into the fold lines that's why I've got it like that okay so we've got that all done you can see I've got a little bit I've gone over on the one side there a little bit 
I could have lined that up a little bit better, but not a crisis. I'm going to just trim it off. It's just a fine sliver, really. Okay, so that was a bit naughty of me, but there we go. I've got that done. See, I didn't quite go up to the edge there, so that's fine. That's not going to go within our fold line now and inhibit that. This is our little pocket. Um, and again, we're going to just stick that down. You could cut this out um, twice, which is usually what I like to do, um, and use some of your scrap bits, you know, so you want to double line this. It is, <laughs> it's got that on the back. This is going to go at the bottom here. Now, don't go straight onto the bottom there. Just leave it a millimeter or a hair's breadth away from the edge there. Okay, so let's hold it on the top here. That's where we don't want it to glue, glue down. It's my little reminder to myself. And then um, just get that down there and over there. Okay, so now I'm going to do it not quite to the bottom, just so that it's, it's not going to be inhibited. So there you can see, I haven't quite gone to the bottom like that. And there's our little pocket in place. Um, and then these are going to end up going on here. Now, what I wanted to use these other two is I want to just reinforce this before I make a little hole here. So these are the two that I haven't backed onto card, right? Um, and they don't need to be circles, honestly. You can I also use these in case you want you stuck this down and then decided to put an eyelet um, the brad through and you would blend in. So that could work as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick one here, sort of in the middle. So just guesstimating, really. It's just going to give me a little bit of reinforcement on the paper itself. Um, and I'm putting it underneath so it covers it up. All right. And these are the two. There should be another one somewhere. Somewhere. I'll find it. <laughs> um, there it is. We're going to put our little brads in here. So I'll go and get these and I'll be back with you in a second. OK, so I've got my two little spots here with the card. So they're quite firm. I've got two very little mini pink brads that I, I had. You can find these on my Amazon favorites. They come in a whole selection of colors, a little foam bit here. And I want to just take um, my little pokey tool. I want to find the middle of of this um, and that's easy because i'm just lining up these dots here so i'm just taking my pokey tool here and want to just press a hole in there then i just take the other one hold these two together like that and once i've lined those up nicely i just push it through the other one as well okay so there i've got two holes in the center and now you want to just put in one of those little brads like that. And we want to find the middle of that in a minute. So we want to do that. And now we want to just find the right spot for this. So get the center point um, of your little fold. Hold this upside down. So we want it like that. And I think this is it here. Okay, now I'm just guiding it here because I can see on my mat and it looks like that's the spot. All right, so I will just put that through there. And then the way to do that is turn it this way. I'm just lining this up on my line here. Um, like that. And that means it needs to be on this line, so. Looks like it's about there. Just making sure I've got enough space for the width here. That's why I'm doing this. Okay, so those are where the holes need to go. Okay. So those will come through there at some point. That's fine. We're going to cover that up. Um, and now you can just go and put this 
in here. Open up the split pin and do the same on the other side there. Okay. You can do this with a cropper doll and eyelets as well. So that would work, or the big bite if you've got one. Now just take your bone folder and make this as flat as possible, um, or your ruler even. And the reason is you want to you're going to cover this now. So we've got our little bits there. Okay, that's the right way up, like that. Okay. And now we want to put on our little lining bits. So let's do that. Right. So this is probably the longest part of this really so I want to, I'm not going to um, sew this or anything so I am making sure I get this right on the edge of this piece like that okay so let's just now we want to start here and and again you don't want to go right into the crease line um, Make sure you get the rounded bits on the top. Hold those all together. Okay. Trim off anything that you haven't quite stuck down properly. Let's do that. I think it's easier to do this with a pair of scissors. So it's just, I've moved it a little bit too far, but that's okay. It gives me a chance just to line up those pieces of paper together perfectly. Now again, you can cut those off with your scissors. So you've got your little rounded edges there now. So this is a perfect time just to go and line those up. But I'm going to just use this because I have one. And it saves me time. Okay, so there now, those, those edges are now well matched. And you can just take your um, dye. Distressing. Gosh, lost for words today and get that beautifully done and the same on this side all right so there we have it job done that looks great I'm happy with that. I think I'm just going to um, put a little bit of distress ink on that side. Okay, there we go. So that's the right way up. And then all that remains for this is just to take some string. This is just pink string. I got this from Plum Boutique. Um, and I just want to make sure that if I bring it down here, I can actually bring it up again. So I'm going to just chop off a bit like that okay so what is that that's about um, it's about 20 inches okay so there we go right so it's just a case of get that folded in half whichever string you've got doesn't have to be pink this is the only string i've got um i'm gonna just loop that at the top here like this there we go Pull that down and then we can just go like that. There we go. Pull it together. Not these two. I'm not these two. You don't have to. Um, make sure before you pull it tight that you have got it right and straight. And then pull those there. And then just even them out okay so now that's ready to go like this and like this okay perfect job done first bit ready okay right the next bit is you want to take this green um, lacy square now in the middle here you'll see there's a very fine line that's the halfway mark that's where you want to fold it okay so really all you need to do is just match up those two edges like that and there you have it okay and that will be perfect on that line 
okay now what you can do is one of two things you can either glue the edges there let's do that okay so you can glue or you can stitch so you want to just do that carefully there and here just on these two sides like that and you want to just press that down gosh i'm not very good at matching edges up today am i not very good i should have um, scored it <laughs> very bad in fact i should have I, I did that poorly so i do apologize you won't need to trim this off this is me just being trying to rectify my my speed here and slow down okay so we've got that there now now it's matched up and again you can just go and do your little distressing which i'll probably end up doing at the end for the most part now i want to fold this in half again okay and that is purely because and this time i am gonna i am going to do this um rather than be speedy okay so i think uh what i want to do is there we go so this is it i'm going to just take my bone folder and get that in half and then um run my finger this way <laughs> this is the right way to do it there we go all right hold that bit there and get that nice and burnished there we go so we've got that there now and we've got two pockets here this is going to get sewn into your signature so um don't worry about that but you've got that there and that there now what i want to do is use whatever punch you can this is the the top and what i did here is i took this the top of my punch you can use a circle punch um the bigger the better in my opinion with that and i'm just going to cut those off then i'm going to close it because it won't go through all those layers and then i'm going to just do that there so we've got them in the same place all right so there's your pocket so there's the pocket and um, we'll get to sticking on other pockets on there in a minute we have got the little journal page it's on the same page as this i think um, and you can see there is a line in the middle there that's the right way up so they look like hearts uh, and roses all right so you want to just fold that in half i'm scared <laughs> scared that i haven't done it right so let's just do it properly okay I'm, I'm i'm very mindful of how long this is going to take so you know i'm trying to um but it doesn't pay to rush it doesn't pay to rush so let's just do it properly so we've got that there we got that there there we go okay that's better now we don't have a problem okay so there's your little journal page like that okay and then we've got this little bit it's got a very fine line there this was on one of the ephemera pages and i have put that on the back um, and again i'm just going this is a little flip up so i'm going to just take my um on the fold line that's earmarked for you and we're going to just go like that we are going to stick this down and you can go and distress all of this stuff i would suggest you do it before i am going to do it afterwards but that's okay it still will be possible um we're going to just line this up here like this get it straight here yeah? like that over there okay so there we've got that we will stick another pocket here i'll get to that All right so that's your your journal page this one tends to go on the inside of that i think she says <laughs> we're getting there all right next bit right so we've got a little envelope piece and i think this was on the same page as that and on this envelope piece you've got three bits you've got the front flap the back and the the front the top flap the front flap and the middle how's that 
So we've got these white lines. Score on the white lines. There we go. Really easy pocket. And this one I will end up stitching, I'm sure. So there's your front flap. Um, and there's your, your other bit like that. Okay. Now, if you want that a bit lower, you can trim it. Or you can put in one of these notches with one of your... Um, punches like that okay now with this one i will end up stitching around there but at the moment i'm going to leave this like this so this is your envelope okay um that goes on the back page over here so i'm actually going to clip it in place so that we know where that goes needs a ruffle on it so but it is a loose piece in there Right, well now we've got our envelopes. So I'm gonna start with the, the, the mini one. So all you want to do, you've printed that on the back. All you want to do here is fold um, just along the little white fold lines, the very faint ones, just go and score all of those. And then this is easily done. It's just gluing two sides. So just match up those little white lines. Really easy with the white lines, so you can see. And they're pale enough to see, but they are also pale enough that once you run your distress ink over them, it's not going to stand out like a sore thumb. So you fold the top side flat there and there. Then we're going to get this one up. Now before I press this, I like to just make sure I've got myself right. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, and I think that I will just put a little bit of Distress Ink there and here before I, I stick these down. And the rest I will do a little later. Okay, so that's fine. You want to bear in mind that the glue doesn't need to go all the way to the top. So that's as far as you need to do it on both sides. And we can stick that down. All right, and then we've just got your flap at the front. And there's your mini envelope. All right, so we'll leave that there. Now we're going to do get these ready. So you've got two envelopes here. You've got this one, um, and you've got this one. We're gonna fold those up in the same way. And then this piece is um, the tuck spot for one of the envelopes. So let's start with that quickly. Yeah. Better. Right, that's the one. Now with this one, um, what I did with this is I glued this. So it's double the paper strength so that it's going to be sturdy and last. Um, but you, you know, that's just me. That's how I do it. Right, so you've got that ready now, and that's going to be a perfect tuck spot on the less decorative envelope. It's going to go over there with a rose at the top. All right, once we folded it, so hang on to that for a moment. I'm going to very quickly score these. Okay, so I folded these and scored these. What we want to do is, this is going to be the one on the left, I think. No, this one's going to be the one on the left. And this one's going to be the one on this side. All right. So that's what we need to remember. What we want to do is I want to just get the um, tops stuck down. Right, so with this one facing up here, so you've got the, just the rows there and that detail on the front. This is the correct way, um, the upright position. So what you want to do is, with this bit here, just to make this a pocket, we want to just stick down this flap at the top only, like that, all right? And then um, 
the same over here. So that's the upright position. We're going to turn this um, this way, I think it was, I think. And then what I had there was this one at the top needs to get stuck down. Okay, there we go. All right. Now what we can do is we can now go and um, put these together. So we want to stick down, not the top there. So you want to hold that bit. But you want to put glue on this bit here, like that. And now we can go and stick that down. Okay, just like that. All right, so we've got a pocket over there now. All right, um, and the same with this one. So just get that one stuck there. Okay, same here. You want to get some glue on this side. And then just get that stuck down like that. Okay. Thank you everyone for following along so far. Uh, due to the length of this video, I've had to put it into two parts. So please be sure to look for part two. Thank you everyone. See you now. Bye.